Appendix of the Autobiography of St. Ignatius Loyola. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. St. Ignatius and His Work for Education In the kingdom of Navarre, in the north of Spain, among those mountains whence the armorers of Toledo drew their metal and forged for the world their trenchant steel, in a region where the generous, passionate, valiant people seem to have formed their character on the austere grandeur of nature itself, St. Ignatius was born. The world represents him as a man of few and stern words, in appearance severe and dark, and yet a man in whom intellect is ever prominent, but intellect elevated by the grandeur of a soul of chivalry, and by an exquisite delicacy of charity, this was the real character of St. Ignatius. This will be seen in the brief glimpse given of his life and his spirit of charity, his absorbing love of souls, in his work of founding missions, his greatness of mind and heart, in the work originated by him and carried on by his followers in the cause of higher education. His character stands prominently on the horizon of history. He cannot be ignored nor is his existence or his work ignored. His enemies have not passed him by without notice, and his friends, the friends of God, have rejoiced that, as God sent him forth to teach and produce fruit that the fruit might remain, the fruit has remained. St. Ignatius sends his voice down the centuries as a great individuality. He has spoken as a man of God, as a man of ideas, a man of energy, he has made his influence felt throughout the universe, not only in the civilized world, but in the uncivilized portion, to bring it into civilization, or to bear it to the advantages of civilization. Other great men have spoken, and have sent forth their influence. Theirs has been a message to the civilized world. It has been limited to one point of view. It has been prowess on the battlefield or on the seas work in the ship of state, or in the fields of science. But Ignatius has not been limited to any one of these. He is the founder of a religious order that has sent pioneers into all these fields and forests of valor or research. He is the writer of the spiritual exercises that have won a fame gained by but few authors. He is the father of many saints. He is the educator of generations. He is the inspirer of scientific, literary, theological, philosophical investigation, and the promoter of discoveries and of pioneer missionaries in the Old and the New World. Ignatius was born in 1491 at the Chateau of Loyola, and at fifteen years of age he was a page in the court of King Ferdinand, and then a soldier under the Duke of Navarre, his relative. The army of Francis I penetrated into Navarre, and at the siege of Pampeluna, Ignatius, captain of infantry, was wounded by a cannonball. His life is given in the preceding pages. I shall refer only briefly to it and to his conversion. He was a young knight, fond of gaiety and feats of arms, and for some time after he received the wound he was confined to his bed while his broken leg was set and while awaiting his slow recovery he read the lives of the saints and of christ as these were the books given to him in place of the novels he had asked for as no others were in the house in reading the lives of the saints his heart was touched his eyes were opened to the vanity of life and the reality of eternity compared with the worldliness of the life he had been leading inspired with enthusiasm at the lives of the saints he said what they have done i can do the event of his life proved the earnestness of his purpose. He resolved to undertake a life of penance and self-denial, and, while occupied with these holy resolutions, he wrote in a book the principal events of the life of Christ and his glorious mother. It was at this time that our Lord sent him a vision to strengthen and console him. He beheld one night, as he was holding his vigils, the glorious Queen of the Angels, who appeared to him holding in her arms her blessed son, enlightening him with the splendor of glory, and charming him by her sweet presence. To her he ascribes the inspiration of the spiritual exercises, and his ardor, imitating its founder, 
has shown the most unbounded affection and devoted filial love toward the Virgin Mother of Christ. At the University of Paris in 1534, on the 14th of March, St. Ignatius received the degree of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy, having received the degree of Bachelor of Arts two years before. Among the earlier colleges founded by St. Ignatius were the following. In 1542 the College of Cambria in Portugal arose. In 1546 St. Francis Borgia founded the College of Gandia. In 1556 the College of Ingolstadt was founded. In 1552 a college was founded at Vienna, and in 1556 one at Prague. In 1553 the Roman College was fully founded, and in 1568 the colleges at Lima, Peru. The Roman College was the type of the Jesuit College. It was begun by Francis Borgia in 1551, at the foot of the capital in Rome, with fourteen members of the order and Father John Peltier, a Frenchman, as superior. The professors taught rhetoric and three languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. There were present there at a given time 2,107 students, 300 in theology. The most eminent professors filled the chairs. Theologians like Suarez and Vasquez, commentators such as Cornelius Alapide and Maldonatus, founders of national history schools as Mariana and Pallavicini, Clavius, reformer of the Gregorian calendar, Kircher, universal in the exact sciences, while the other colleges throughout the world remain provided with their own required forces and maintain their own prestige. From this college came forth distinguished men in every line of intellectual life and general eminence. Men of elevated thought and of noble and generous minds. In particular three characters came, young men that were to fill with admiration of their greatness the succeeding century. Stanislaus Koska, a Polish noble who died at seventeen years of age, Aloysius Gonzaga, an Italian prince of twenty-three, and John Birchmans, a Flemish townsman of twenty-two. The fundamental principles in the educational institute of St. Ignatius were these. First, solidity and thoroughness. The first condition of all higher studies as well as of lower studies was such that, as St. Ignatius said, it was useless to begin at the top, as the edifice without a good foundation would never stand. Let literature and philosophy be gone through satisfactorily, and then theology may be approached. Literature must come first of all. St. Ignatius provides for law and medicine, but by professors of law and medicine outside of the order. But no professors of the order were sent for work outside of Jesuit institutions. If the younger men were sent abroad, the younger generation would be deprived of that type, and if eminent men were sent forth without a permanent Jesuit college, the work would not be that of the order, but of scattered individuals, and would soon perish. In the cause of education, St. Ignatius had placed in his charter the watchwords defense and advance. As a leader of a military type, he had gathered about him the flower of youth and of mature age, from college and university, from doctor's chair and prince's throne, and in fifteen years from the foundation of the order, left one hundred colleges and houses in Portugal, Spain, Italy, Sicily, Germany, France, Brazil, and the East Indies. Xavier traveled from India and Ceylon in the west to Maluka, Japan, and the coast of China on the east. Wherever the energy and activity of apostolic zeal penetrated, it was with the purpose, and usually the result, of permanent apostolic work in the foundation of educational institutions. Father de Bacher says, Wherever a Jesuit set his foot, wherever there was founded a house, a college, a mission, there too came apostles of another class, who labored, who taught, who wrote. Sixty years later than the time of St. Ignatius, there were two hundred and seventy-two colleges, and in the one hundred and fifty years the collegiate and university houses of education numbered 769. St. Ignatius died July 31, 1556. He was sixty-five years of age. At the age of thirty he hung up his sword at Montserrat, and with ready mind and heart and pen 
In thirty-five years he achieved the gigantic work of the founding and developing the order. The educational work was projected and advanced in a brief period of fifteen years, from 1542 to 1556. He was a man of prudence and deliberation and of unswerving decision, vigilant and patient. Whenever he appeared account had to be taken of the man, and so with his order. Whenever it appears it is to be recognized, either by foes to oppose it or friends to love it and forward its work. It has its churches, its missions, its colleges. In its churches it is faithful to the teaching of Christ and his church, loyal ever to the vicar of Christ, in its missions unbounded in zeal and personal self-sacrifice, in its colleges it aims ever at the solid and thorough training of complete Christian education. Ignatius of Loyola made his order to go on without him, and it goes on just as he made it. End of the Appendix End of the Autobiography of St. Ignatius